I've never really liked the concept of the gaming phone because you can play games on any phone. It's not quite like PCs where you need really high-end hardware to get the best out of your games. But Huawei's spin-off brand Honor has recently launched the Honor Play which it's positioning as a gaming phone. And we finally got our hands on one here at IFA in Berlin. And who better than Engadget's resident chicken connoisseur to put it through its paces. And bear in mind, I usually play on an iPhone 8. So let's start with a few of the more general things that you could say make this a good gaming phone. First of all, you've got a big 6.3 inch Full HD Plus display. Uh, that makes the phone pretty big too. I thought when I first held it, it might be a little bit heavy, but um, with a bit of experience, that's actually not proven true. It's fine to play with. Secondly, you get a pretty big battery in here. It's a 3,750 milliampere hour battery, which uh, you know keeps it going for, for a decent amount of time. And you also get uh, Huawei's Kirin 970 processor in it. Now, Huawei just launched its new Kirin 980 processor here at IFA, but the Kirin 970 is still the chip that you get in Huawei's flagships like the P20 Pro, so it's no slouch really. But there are a few specific features of this phone that Honor claims makes it, you know, a gaming powerhouse. Now, one of these is GPU Turbo, which is uh, a blend of hardware and software that they say improves the graphical performance by about 60% and reduces power consumption by 30%. That's compared with the Kirin 960, so we're not sure quite how that works out, but you'll basically have to take Huawei slash Honor's word for it. Uh, it's also something you can't toggle on and off, so it's really something you just have to experience. And I've got to say for the most part that this does play PUBG Mobile really well. Uh, I got a really stable frame rate um, at the highest graphical settings. And uh, Huawei says that's uh, about 40 FPS on average. I mean, when you do jump out of the plane at the beginning, uh, that drops quite significantly, but that's normal on, on every phone. Uh, but when you touch down, very detailed, very stable, very good. I have seen a few graphical glitches with the backgrounds kind of flipping in and out, but whether that's the phone, whether that's PUBG Mobile, or whether that's the occasionally shaky Wi-Fi connections we've been on while we're here, um, I'm not quite sure. As I said, I haven't held back on the settings, so I'll just run through them really quickly for anyone that's interested. We've got the uh, graphics set to HD here, which is the highest, the frame rate set to Ultra. Uh, I haven't changed the style from Classic. We also have anti-aliasing enabled, and the setting that lowers the FPS uh, if it starts underperforming, we've got that disabled. Um, and uh, just so you know, we've got aim assist turned off because that's basically cheating. I'm not so sure about the uh, battery saving claims. I've played it today for maybe about 45 minutes. I probably used the phone for about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, I have had the brightness set very high, but I've drained about 50% of the battery, which um, isn't too much better than I would get if I was using my iPhone in the same capacity. PUBG is one of those games that if you're playing without headphones, you're doing it wrong. You really need to hear everything around you. And one of the features specific to this is called 3D Surround Audio, which works in PUBG and a few other games. Now, the idea is you get a better spatial awareness, just a kind of richer audio experience. When you turn it on, audio feels like it becomes a lot more distant. That kind of helps with uh, being able to pinpoint where people, vehicles, or gunshots are coming from a little bit easier. It's not a game changer, but it, it does work. Curiously, Honor didn't actually include any headphones in the box, so I tried with some cheapy Bluetooth headphones. They weren't compatible with the uh, 3D sound, so I ended up going with some really cheap earbuds I got with a phone eons ago. And the last gamey specific feature is called 4D Smart Shock. Um, and it's actually pretty cool. It's uh, basically some clever vibration patterns that 
feel a bit like you're holding, you know, an Xbox or a PS4 gamepad. So what's really clever about this is the vibration patterns change a lot depending on what gun you're using, whether you have a silencer equipped, whether you're in a vehicle. So uh, it does provide a little bit more immersion and it's not that distracting. The only thing I did find though was after a while your hands start to get a bit tingly, a little bit numb, so maybe not for the, the longest play session. Also, that setting is hidden in a really strange place. You actually have to go into the Game Suite app, turn it on from the settings in there, and then load up PUBG through that app. So it took me a while to figure out how to turn it on in the first place. So, so far, so good, right? Well, there's a few problems with this that actually make the Honor Play not a good gaming phone. Personally, I experience quite a lot of audio lag when I use my Bluetooth headphones, and the screen is big enough that you really want to tighten up the controls or you'll find your thumbs trying to wander all over the place. What's more, the screen actually has rounded corners, which doesn't make a lot of sense, especially for PUBG. Um, if you've played before, you'll know the map is in the top right-hand corner, and this, uh, this rounded corner really obscures quite a lot of that, so that doesn't really make a lot of sense. It also gets very hot very quickly, um, and that's no fun if you're playing for 10 minutes and you're already sweating and uncomfortable. But the worst thing of all is the placement of the headphone jack. It's all the way to one side, which means you can't wrap your hand around it to play comfortably. Uh, now, you may think you can just switch the orientation, but where you naturally kind of rest the phone on your hands is exactly where the power button's supposed to be and I've hit it a frustrating amount of times, and it is very much a design oversight in that respect. Oh my God. I had that as well. I'm dead, aren't I? Do you see that? It's so irritating. I had that guy. So there are a number of counterintuitive things that I don't feel make this the perfect gaming phone, but of course phones aren't always about gaming. So there are other things to like about this. The design is really nice. It's nice and thin. This uh, purpley pink color especially looks really good. There are also a few slightly pricier special editions that are laser engraved and have a great black and red color scheme. Um, you get quite a few cameras on this too. There's a dual 16 and 2 megapixel camera on the back. You get a 16 megapixel camera on the front uh, and loads of AI and software. Um, the Honor's kind of thrown in there to make sure you squeeze the absolute best out of the hardware. And considering all that, you can't really argue with the price. Now, this is 329 euros, uh, which is around $380 or 279 pounds in the UK. So it's a very affordable device. If you are thinking about buying this for gaming or PUBG Mobile specifically, then you do need to think twice because it's not perfect. If you really want a perfect gaming phone, then you might have to wait until later this year for the Acer ROG smartphone. That has some crazy cooling technology. It's got ultrasound triggers on the sides as if you're playing with an actual gamepad. You can even plug it into a dock and uh, hook up a monitor, keyboard, a mouse if you really want to be a filthy cheater. Now that's what I'd call a proper gaming phone, but of course you're probably going to have to cough up quite a lot for that hardware. But anyway, I'm going to get back to playing some PUBG Mobile now, uh, but keep your eyes on Engadget.com for all the latest news from IFA 2018.